Hey guys, I'm David DiMuzio. Welcome to Hair Loss Hope. Today we're going to talk about hats. I had one of you guys ask me to do a video on headgear and hats are something that most everyone that is starting to lose their hair, especially guys, pick up. You know, it's sort of the first go-to thing is you think, okay, I'm losing my hair. I think usually first people either pick a hat and start wearing hats or shave their head. For me, I actually shaved my head first and then I started wearing hats as I started going more bald. So I have Jay International who's got a great channel here on YouTube about hair loss and just all of his wild experiences. He's such a cool dude and always has really thoughtful ideas and also has been through a hat phase. So we wanted to just discuss what that meant to us and some of the benefits of hats and why you know, covering your head or creating that hairline illusion with a hat might be important. So Jay, what's what's your take on hats? So no doubt, almost universally, when you're losing your hair, you will go through a hat wearing phase. And let me just change switch gears just for a second, because I recently had this hair transplant. And it's even though it's starting to fall out in this image, you can see it's quite noticeable. There's this line and I have my temple points and you could almost argue it's like I have a hair hat. I've mentioned this in some of my other videos, but when you have receding hairline or just some type of hair loss pattern, it's like you have a hat that doesn't fit your head. So let me put on a hat here for a second and I'll just pretend I'm bald and I don't have any hairline. When you put the hat on and you might not even realize this at the time, but you've it's a hair system. You've immediately got back your hairline, you framed your face, and that can be really comforting because losing your hair can make you feel naked and exposed and all of the problems people are familiar with. So the hat is useful for that, but then there's people who, who have great heads of hair. The hat is part of their style. Let me wear another hat for a second. This is a hat that has a brim that goes all the way around. It's called a boonie hat. And I wear this all the time now, but this actually was hard for me to wear at first because your hat just like your hairstyle can really shape your appearance says something about who you are so when your hair might be taken away from you and you don't have your styling options the hat brings it back so it, it can be a very useful tool for those losing hair and those with hair but sometimes it becomes neurotic and you freak out if you don't have a hat and let me give tell you a little story so I worked in San Francisco when I was losing my hair and I always had to wear a hat. I went through this hat wearing phase where I, unfortunately my job, I could wear it. And once I was near the baseball stadium, which is near the water and San Francisco is windy and the hat blew off into the water. And I actually jumped in the water to get that hat. I didn't, I was just so freaked out by it. I, I had to have my hat and I didn't care if my whole body got wet. So that's, a lot of people go through that and that's an extreme example and that's that's some of my thoughts on why why people wear hats and the benefits and detriments to it it reminds me of when i started wearing a hat and you mentioned the hat being part of your identity and when you're losing your hair suddenly your hair is not that part of your identity or it's not the part of your identity that you want it to be when when you start losing it and so having a hat, it sort of brings back a part of your identity and the way that you express yourself in a way for people to view you at the same time, creating an instant hairline in the way that it frames your face. So I was thinking of, of Indiana Jones, you know, this is such an iconic character and you cannot picture Indiana Jones without a hat really. And it's easy to picture Harrison Ford, you know, without a hat you can do that but then when as soon as you put that hat on him he's no longer harrison ford now he's indiana jones and i was thinking about myself when i was in the philippines and uh, pursuing music my music career there just having my first hit songs there and losing my hair it's when i really started getting noticeable and so i i tried on all of these different hats and hats don't typically look good on me but i found this one hat that look good on me. It was the only one. And I'll put up some pictures with myself wearing this hat and I'm like, you'll see it in all of these different music videos that I did. 
And it was this one little Davis Cup um, American flag kind of hat. And I thought, okay, well, I'm, you know, an American citizen from the U.S. I'm here in the Philippines, and th this is an American flag. So this, is like, part of – partly identifies who I am, and it looks good on me, and I'm losing my hair. And so I put that on, and I accidentally left that hat in a taxi cab. And, I, oh, my gosh, it just, like – devastated me because that hat was such a big part of my identity and I spent months after that on eBay trying to find someone selling that Davis Cup hat and I finally found that hat on eBay and then I ended up buying a couple of them because I was like oh my gosh if I ever lose this hat again I can't find a hat that looks good on me and like this is like my signature hat and when I'm in the Philippines now, I, you know, after having all these different viral videos doing music and stuff there, but most of them were wearing a hat. Now I've had some since then, I'm not wearing a hat, but so I get recognized a little bit. But there was a period where if I wasn't wearing that hat or a hat in the Philippines when I would go out, no one would recognize me. But as soon as I put that hat on and walked down the street, people would, hey, David Musio, you know? So it was like, <laughs> it was so much of my identity. I had that experience too where I had this one hat and just the bill curved perfectly and the color just matched my skin and I, I love that hat and I lost that hat. And that brings me into what you might call two camps of hat wearing. There's hat as a surrogate for hair and that's where you kind of start to run into the danger of neurosis and having to wear the hat all the time and then hat as an accessory of style. And Indiana Jones is really a great example and there was even shots his hat would blow off and you know, he'd, 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 he'd risk his life to get that hat. Like that was part of his identity. And this does, and you know, your channel's about hair, my channel's about hair. This ties into, there's something deep going on where you care about what's covering your head and be it a hat, hair, or a hair system, it says something about who you are. Yeah. I mean, you even mentioned uh, halos, you know, being this, um, this symbol that's pretty universal of like that thing covering your hair that instantly identifies who you are, you know, um, that someone is an angel or that they're this higher spiritual being or whatever. Even if you show a child who knows nothing about follicular units and hairlines and crown baldness, and you show image of different people and say there's Jesus in it. And Jesus is no different than the other people, except he has a halo. The child is going to be drawn to that. And that's where I'm getting into this fundamental and instinctual desire for something covering their head or some spiritual power or something elite about that. You mentioned Jesus. I, I was just thinking like Jesus, the crown of thorns, right? Like what an incredible symbol, right? I mean, that is like there's nothing really physically that Jesus uh, – the, the robe, right? The robe is one of the things that we sort of think about. But there's really no other symbol – um, you know, that Jesus had. Like you instant if I put a crown of thorns on my head and I walk down the street, people go, Oh, he's he's, you know, acting like Jesus, right? Like if I put a robe on, they might, but pretty much only if I like only if I grew my hair long and had a beard. <laughs> then they go, Oh, he's kind of Jesus like. But if anybody, even if it's a bald dude walking down the street and he puts a crown of thorns on, people are gonna go, Oh, it's he's doing the Jesus thing. So I'm not Christian, but for me, I think Jesus is the single most potent image that I've seen. That Nothing evokes just feelings of compassion and warmth and love. I, I don't have to be Christian to recognize the power of Jesus. And this is not meant to be a religious statement. It's meant to be a symbolic statement. And of course, Jesus, you know, has beautiful hair, the crown of thorns, the crucifix. So these things are symbols for who we are. They extend beyond words into metaphors and the spiritual. So tying it back into a hat and what that accomplishes, again, it can be a surrogate for hair. It can be useful if you're just not ready to be comfortable with your hair loss, but it also is an accessory for style and it spirals out into many forms in existence and, and people. Yeah, I was thinking about actually uh, music, right? And hats instantly identify the music that you make. <laughs> so if you wear if you wear a cowboy hat, you're a country singer. That's just, it, instantly that's your genre. I mean, even when um, 
John Bon Jovi wore a uh, cowboy hat occasionally he did but you go okay now he's doing the wanted dead or alive now he's doing like the country rock thing um and then you think about uh hats within hip-hop instantly if someone is wearing that sort of you know i mean you know the hat i don't even have to tell you what it is but that baseball cap style thing you go okay well he's he obviously does some kind of a rap rapping, right? It's it's pretty incredible. And you think of the the top, I think the three biggest selling male country artists of all time are Garth Brooks, Kenny Chesney, and Tim McGraw. I'm pretty sure that those are the three biggest. I know it. Um, Kenny Chesney and Garth Brooks are number one and number two. And what do you think about that? You can't picture either of those guys really without without a cowboy hat. And you think about a 10-gallon cowboy hat. That's such an ostentatious, I even use the word flamboyant thing. And that, that's a statement for who you are. And some people, they have an Afro or whatever is native to their ethnicity, a form of just big puffy hair. And these things are statements for who you are. And when you're losing your hair, but you still want to have style, you still want to have an identity, a, a hat can be a useful tool to make that statement of who you are and who you want to be. And as we've been discussing, this is not just for people who are losing your hair. It's, it's quite a potent image to have a hat. It goes a little bit off topic with the hat, but I was thinking about just because you're mentioning these different images and I'm starting to think of like really iconic bands um, and suddenly the Jackson 5 pop into my head and the Afro, right? Like you couldn't imagine the Jackson 5 as, a, as like five little – african-american bald bald kids you know it's just like a totally different thing and if you see um that was sort of their hat was the afro you saw four images of like four african-american guys or girls or i mean uh, guys or like kids with bell bottoms and an afro or even pretty much almost any anything wearing anything but five of them and they all have afros you're gonna think oh it's the jackson five and if you think of the beatles Instantly, that was their thing. They had this certain haircut um, that almost functioned like a hat, you know, with its. So digging a little further into this very human desire to have hair or something sprouting from your head and the universality of it, let's talk about a couple other images. So going back in time, you, you can see cave paintings on different continents, people who never met each other until many generations and years later. There'd be this cave painting and there'd be a halo coming from the head. So that's another potent image that proves there's something foundational in humans that has a need for the, a symbol from your head. And when you shave off your head, it can feel naked. It can feel like you're robbed of that. I think of Rastafarians too and how much the dreadlock matters to them. And you know, I sometimes wonder, Bob Marley had cancer and he had to shave his head and i sometimes wonder if the shaving of his dreadlocks is what killed him actually that might sound silly but what i'm saying is it's not wrong to have this spiritual hunger and yearning it's not wrong because it's universal so if many people across many points of time in their own ways have yearned for and presented this artistically or on their own heads this desire for hair or a crown or something coming from your head it only makes sense you would want that too thank you so much for coming on the channel jay and talking about this craziness of of hat wearing and hair loss with me it's really really great to get your perspective on all this and make sure to check out jay's channel i'll put a link to it in the video description